Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly and I'm a mixed media artist who specializes in gouache paint, ink work, and sometimes I do digital painting. In this week's video, I'll be showing you my process on how I painted this spot illustration. It's of a cherry blossom flower. And this is all part of a spring Washington state themed repeat pattern that I'm doing. I hope I can do one for every season, but we shall see. In the past, I have said, I'm gonna do this huge giant project and then life happens. So you know what? I'm not gonna jinx myself. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. So I'm starting my process how I normally do. If you have seen my other videos, you know that I use a lot of watercolor pencils as the base. I really like the feeling of drawing out the plan versus just going right in with watercolor as a base. Although in some instances I do like doing that. But in this case, especially because of how tiny and intricate this flower is going to be, I decided to just draw it first with my watercolor pencils, which are from the brand Derwent. I have everything linked down below. And I'm starting with a red because it's gonna be pink. You see what I'm saying? But I will go in later with some cooler toned watercolor pencils to add some more shading. So at the start, it's just like a monochromatic drawing of cherry blossom flowers. And honestly, I think it looks kind of cool at this stage, but that's not what I wanted for this project. But I don't know, I might mess with that later as like a stylistic choice. Even though I do plan on adding shadows in a different color, I am still showing the range of values with the red. So anywhere where I know there's going to be shadows, I'm intensifying the red. Once I was done with the red, I went in with a blue watercolor pencil and anywhere where there's going to be really intense shadows, like where any petals are going to be overlapping each other or casting a really long shadow, those are areas where I'm adding the blue. Once I added the dark blue pencil, in the very deepest, darkest areas where the shadows are. I then added a purple pencil. Just really, I'm doing the most with this underpainting. I realize it because guess what? I'm going to add water and then I'm going to paint over it later anyways. But I just love really preparing a painting. When I added the purple, I added it in areas where there's some slight shadows, but it's getting closer towards the light. So that added warmth with a color that's still on the cooler side compared to the red. It just adds this gradient where it melds the red with the blue. Especially with a painting around subject matter that's a little confusing, these petals are going all over the place. They're, they look like they're just exploding from the flower. I find that really being this specific with an underpainting helps me personally because I know exactly where everything is supposed to be and it feels like a very real object in my mind. So that's why I like really preparing a painting to the fullest extent like this. I know using like three different colors for an underpainting, a lot of people just use one and usually I do two, two to three. I think it just better prepares me for the rest of the painting. Thank you. 
So after I activated the watercolor pencils with water, I went in with my first layer of gouache paint and with this first layer, I'm using a, quite a bit of water. Not too much, it's not to the point where it's like watercolor, but you know, I, it's not super opaque, if that makes sense. I like starting all of my paintings with thinner layers of gouache paint and then as it gets into finer and finer detail, that's when I use less and less and less water. As you can see in the reference photo, which I took by the way, <laughs> photographer of the world over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see from the reference photo, the cherry blossom flowers, their petals are very delicate, almost like poppies to the point where it kind of looks like tissue paper. So there's going to be a lot of transparency, which is going to further complicate this, which is also why I'm glad I did a really extra underpainting because now I know this area is the same petal. It's just that you can see the sunlight going through it. On the right side, it looks darker because you can see the petal behind it. Not casting a shadow really, but you can physically see the other petal behind it. So a lot of strange shapes to keep account for. I'm just looking at a lot of these abstract shapes and blocking them in in this stage. Something else that can get really confusing while you're painting is looking at shadows that are really close to the sun. They're going to be very saturated versus the ones that are further away from the light source are going to be a lot more cooler and maybe even more diffuse looking. So there's going to be some petals that are very vibrant, very hot pink, where the harsh shadow kind of meets the bright light. And then there's going to be other areas where it's a lot more soft, a lot more cool and diffused. I'm probably going to bring up the reference photo quite a bit since this is such a visually complex but simple thing to paint. Since I took this picture, I know exactly what the lighting was like. Very overcast and it was backlit because, hello, I was pointing my camera up. <laughs> Pointing my phone up to take a picture of a cherry blossom on the tree, the sun was hiding behind what I like to call neon gray skies. It's completely cloudy, but it's just bright. First, it's just bright and very overcast and you still need sunglasses and then you look like a ding dong because you're outside and it looks like it might rain, but it's just very bright and everyone's like, why are you wearing sunglasses? And it's like, the imaginary sun's out, okay? Like, get with it. Long story short, neon gray skies. That was the lighting. And it was backlit. So in this stage, I'm pretty much done with color blocking and I'm focusing my attention in smaller and smaller color blocks. And after I do that, that's when I select some areas that are a little more finished looking and I actually try blending and creating softer gradients. I do have a tendency to over blend, so I really try to hold back on that too early on in a painting because I know I'm going to add more layers on top and it's gonna mix with whatever's underneath. That's the nature of gouache. It tends to get reactivated pretty easily. So I don't wanna mess with it too much. I know I'm going to add more layers on cause I'm not really close to the detailing yet. So like the fine details is what I mean. So I don't want it to get all muddy and lose its form and structure right before I get into like all the fun stuff, like the fine details, the texture of the petals and things like that. I'm just lightly blending. I'm not trying to be too perfect about it because I know later on that's when I'll have the time to do that and it won't mess up the integrity of the, the form of all the petals I just painted.
As you can see, I'm using a pretty small brush and while I'm not in the details stage, it's really nice to use something this small just to blend the very outer edges of all the color blocked areas of gouache. I also just paint really small, but in general, I find that it's really useful for that. What I do is I just dip my brush into plain water, no paint added at all, and then I blot it off on a paper towel or a rag I have nearby. It's the perfect consistency to smooth everything out. I like my paintings being very velvety and matte. I like high opacity with my gouache paint too. I don't like a whole lot of transparency. So as I get more and more detailed, I'm using less and less water. I also find that using less and less water really helps with getting sharper detail. Right now I have still a decent amount of water. The consistency of the gouache paint it's kind of like, I don't, I don't want to say milk, like whole milk. <laughs> it's like the consistency of half and half, I guess. That would be a good, I think that's an accurate no. metaphor. Now my dog's barking, oh. excellent. But the consistency is nice because it blends in with what's underneath, but not too much. It doesn't reactivate what's underneath too much. And anywhere you want it to reactivate and blend into the underneath layers, you can just mess with the brush more in those areas and it would mix right in with whatever's underneath. But wherever you left it still for the most part just sits there. Although when it is this watery, you will notice as it dries it changes color. It tends to look lighter when it's wet and then as it dries it gets a little bit darker. So just something to take account of or notice as you're painting. As I'm layering, I am reducing the amount of water I'm using. And another thing that I'm doing is enhancing the contrast. I like really high contrast in my artwork. So anywhere where there's going to be a lot more light coming through the petals, I'm going to be applying titanium white gouache paint in those areas. And the consistency of this is similar to the last stage I just mentioned, but just a little bit thicker. I kind of messed up on that lower petal. I had to apply pink back into it because I didn't do the right shading. You can kind of see the petal behind it, but the petal behind it is getting a lot of sunlight. So it's kind of hard to tell how that shadow would look coming through the petal. Here's what it looks like in the reference photo, but I was just having a hard time with it. So I wound up over blending it and just starting over just in that specific area. Then in other areas where it's closer to the light source, but there's still shadows going on there and it's higher contrast, I'm applying a lot more hot pink 
to where those shadows would be because where they meet the highest point of highlight, it's going to enhance the color and make it more vibrant. This was definitely a challenging study. It wasn't intended to be a study, but it really was. I learned a lot from this piece because Cherry Blossom's petals are very, very chaotic and there's a lot of them and they just kind of go everywhere. So it's hard to distinguish each petal and how the shading is, if it's being shaded from a shadow being cast from another petal or if it's just transparency. There's a whole lot going on, so please excuse the mess. I had to kind of redo the shading on that one because the transparency and the shadows that are going on made it very confusing for me, but I'm just trying my best to focus on each little abstract shape that I see and viewing it objectively instead of trying to paint what I think I see. So after getting all of that blended and figured out, I am now ready to go to the next stage where I get more specific with my application of paint. So after we have the basic form, it starts getting into more and more detail and I'm looking at instead of each petal, I'm now looking at each and every little ripple and frill on each petal where they kind of bend or crease anywhere there's going to be texture or shadow on each petal I'm really focusing in on those finer details we're not on the fine fine details but we're getting closer I'm using more of that hot pink mixture I made to shade the petals that are really close to the sunlight. I'm taking some creative freedom with this because in the photograph it's definitely a lot more cool toned and overcast, rainy, Washington looking, but I wanted this to be not that, so I'm using more hot pink because it's very, very vibrant. I love it.
As you can see here, I'm using less and less paint and that's because I'm getting very, very specific now. Now is the time where I'm starting to apply texture to the petals. Petals tend to have these vertical ripples or lines, kind of like the veins that run through them. And I really wanted to replicate that look. I like a lot of texture in my work. So I'm going in with barely any water. It's mostly just paint. And in some areas I'm using white gouache paint right out of the tube. And I'm just applying that lengthwise with the petals to give the illusion of the veins that run through them. Then for the center thingies, I don't know what they're called, in the cherry blossom flower, I just used light pink. I created the lines in the direction that they were growing. Then there was a center antenna thingy. What are they called? I don't know what they're called. And it was light green, that one. So basically I just used the local color of what it is. The flower that's on top, I used titanium white to highlight all the little hairs inside the flower. And the one at the bottom, I did the same thing, but I also included shading. I did, I, I think I used sap green in the M-gram color gouache set, and I used that to shade that green thingy. And then for the dots in the middle, I did a burgundy color and highlighted that with titanium white as well. Anyways, thank you for watching today. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, then don't. And maybe consider subscribing. I don't know. Um, I'll see you next week. Bye!